Hey everyone, welcome back to the Dark Forest. I hope that you all are having a fabulous Monday night. In the comments below, tell me, where are you from? What state? What country? I am just a little bit curious to see where everybody is from. The internet is quite magnificent. Anyways, let's get going on these tales. This happened to me back when I was eight years old. My mother and I were visiting my aunt up in Vermont. We flew in the stow, but then their house was over in Burlington, I believe. My aunt had a huge mansion somewhere out in the middle of nowhere. They were pretty well off. They invited us to spend Christmas with her and her family that year. It was our first time, even my mom's first time, on an airplane. It was pretty spooky, to be honest. We stopped in Chicago and then took another flight from Chicago to Vermont. Once we had arrived, it was white in every direction that you looked. I've never seen so much snow in my entire life. They picked us up at the airport. They had two kids. For privacy reasons, I'll just name them A and B. They took us out to dinner somewhere in town. I don't remember where it was, but it was somewhere close to their house. Once we had arrived, we just got settled in with our luggage and just enjoyed the evening around the living room. They showed us to our room, and eventually I went to bed that night. The following morning was pretty nice. I woke up to smelling bacon somewhere in the house. The whole house smelt like bacon. My aunt was cooking downstairs. My mom and I went to the bathroom and brushed our teeth and did the things that you do in the morning, right? We went downstairs and ate breakfast as a family. They gave us a quick tour around the house. Actually, it wasn't that quick. This place was humongous. It even had an indoor pool. They showed us the backyard. That was the best part about it. The backyard was humongous. I don't even know how many acres they owned back then, but it was as far as the eye could see. In their backyard, they had an actual small lake. They had a wooden dock that went out right in front from behind the house. They even told me there was some fish back there. The lake was black. There was no color to the lake. It was completely frozen, but you could tell there was no blueness whatsoever. Thick snow covered the landscape in every direction that we looked. The trees were just cram-packed with snow, but still beautiful. They had two golden retriever dogs that were pretty nice. They were pretty big, too. They always tried to jump on me and knock me over. Again, remember, I was eight years old. Me and my cousins just hung around the lake and had lunch. We sat on the wooden area because I was too scared to stand on the lake. My cousins did. They said it was nothing to worry about, but I was pretty paranoid. I've seen movies, and I don't want to break through and go in the water and freeze to death. So I just stayed on the wooden dock. Even during the day, it was really cold. But not as cold as it was that night. After dinner, I wanted to go outside once more. My mom told me no, but then my aunt quickly said, That's okay. Just tell them not to wander off too far. My mom, my uncle-in-law, and my aunt, they were all sipping wine near the fireplace. I remember my mom nodding, giving in, and saying just, Don't go too far out in the backyard. I don't want you to get it lost. Remember, we're not from here, and I have no idea where to look for you. My aunt just laughed. <laughs> don't worry. All the lights are on outside. He can't get lost. My cousins didn't want to go with me. 
They were reading Goosebumps and Babysitter Club books upstairs. So this adventure was all to myself. I walked outside, and it was the coldest feeling I had ever felt in my entire life. Uh, we were born and raised in Florida, so this was a whole new world. I could hear the crunchiness from the steps I took in the thick powdered snow. The snow was so thick a couple of times I even got stuck even though I was wearing snow boots. I walked over towards the edge line near the woods on the other side of the lake. I swore I heard something. I heard some cracking noises, some type of movement in the woods. I remember thinking to myself, Man, it's so cold out. What would even be out here? I always thought that bears would hibernate during the winter. Of course, what would I know? It didn't occur to me that it might be something dangerous until I saw something. At that time, it didn't really register in my brain that something dangerous might be inside those woods lurking right back at me. I started walking into the woods just curious to the sounds that I would heard. I was just curious, and I wasn't thinking straight at all. I was starting to get just a little bit too deep in the woods to where I couldn't see the lights from the house behind me. I stopped in my tracks and just decided to head back. I'd just rather wait until the next day, I told myself. Plus, I'm alone. It'd be much more fun if my cousins were with me. I started making my way outside of the woods when I heard weird noises behind me. They weren't right behind me, but they were definitely close by. I froze in place, terrified. Whatever was making those noises was... It had to have been big. I couldn't run. The snow was like two and a half feet deep. All I could do was take giant steps and try to get out of there as fast as possible towards the light. I finally broke the wood line and started running in the direction of the lake. Great, I had to run around the lake. I forgot. There was no way I was going to step on that ice. I just didn't trust it. As I made my way around the lake, I quickly turned around to see if whatever it was was following me. Nothing was running out of the woods. But as I looked closer into the wood line, that's when I saw the dark figure of something very tall. It looked like a wolf. But its eyes were glowing. Last December, my brother and I were hiking over at the Dunbar Cave State Park. It's a pretty famous attraction up here in Clarksville, Tennessee, just about 50 minutes north of Nashville. We've been here all of our lives. We're still here to this day. But I refuse to go back to that state park after what we had both witnessed last December. We were hiking. It was wintertime. There was about four to five inches of snow. Nothing major. Fall had just passed and winter had officially begun. It's absolutely beautiful out here. We love the country, and we love state parks. Camping is something that's on our to-do list, but not wintertime. I could hike in it, but there's no way I'm sleeping overnight outside. It's just too cold. Anyways, we were just walking around, hiking and not hiking, if you really want to know. It started off as a nice hike, but we ended up just walking. It's really just chilling, you know? There was no school. We didn't have anything else to do, but we just wanted to go walk around and explore. 
It started off as a hike, but ended up being just a casual walk at the state park. That was until we got closer to the cave. The touristic cave that everybody swears up and down is amazing and beautiful and so much fun with tours. Well, the cave's closed. Thank God it was closed. When we had first arrived to the cave, it was already like getting dark outside. I think it was sometime past 6 p.m. I don't really remember, to be honest with you. It was like seven months ago. As we walked closer to the metal fencing, I swore I saw movement. I pointed to it and talked to my brother. Hey, dude, check it out. There's somebody in there. My brother just shrugged, laughed, and punched my shoulder with his fist. Yeah, right, dude. You ain't gonna get me that easy, all right? No, I'm serious. Look. He turned his head to where I was looking and gasped. We started walking very slowly towards the direction of the fencing. I wanted to see who was there. Did somebody get trapped from a tour? Who's back there, some homeless person? I could only see reflective eyes and some type of dark figure. At first. But it's when we had gotten closer. That's when we saw it. Ten fingers reaching outwards from the metal. Black, furry, long claws gripping the steel. A large mass of fur just pressed against the steel from within. A dog-like face, at least six feet tall, staring and growling at us. The reflective eyes were much more clear now up close. Now that it's not truly hidden in the darkness, we could see this thing. Its eyes were a reddish color. It snarled at us, and it just stood there. We backed up. I almost fell from some rocks behind me. My brother screamed. I grabbed him and said, Let's get the hell out of here. What the hell is that thing? We turned around and left that park. We've never went back there since. A few years ago, I flew up to Alaska to visit my uncle. My uncle is an avid fisherman. It's what he does for a living. Originally, he's from Oregon, just like us, but for the past five years, he's been living up north in Alaska. He occasionally comes here to visit, but he loves it up there. My uncle and my mom planned a Christmas trip up to his house that year. We we're only going to be up there for a week, the same week as Christmas, of course. That way, we could experience the true nature and beauty of Alaska during wintertime. He would tell us all kinds of stories of things that he would see at his cabin. He lived about 10 miles outside of Anchorage. He had some little two-bedroom cabin out there. It was just himself and his dog. He's divorced and has two kids, but he doesn't have a really good relationship with either one of them. After he had picked us both up at the airport, he greeted us and took us out for lunch in the city. Now, the city's pretty big. It's not like anything like Portland or anything, but it's big. There's roughly about 280-something thousand people in Anchorage, which is still a fairly large city, but it's no New York or anything like that. It was colder than a dove. And I mean, cold, cold. Like, I'd rather be up in Chicago compared to Alaska. It's that bad, in my opinion. After we had finished lunch... We started making the drive out of town to his cabin. It seemed a little bit longer than I expected it to take just for about 10 to 12 miles out of town. I guess it had to do with the snow. 
because he had the drive just a little bit slower. Eventually, he pulled up to his cabin. What a dump. I ain't lying. I was expecting some really nice cabin. This thing was old, and it was small too. It had a chimney, thank god, but outside of that, it had a small wooden porch, and it was just tiny. But you know what? He had land. Lots of it. I remember asking my mom in private once we had first settled in. Why did Uncle Bobby get such a small cabin? She just replied, Why not? It's just him and his dog. I guess it kind of makes sense now, I replied. My uncle said the tidy in and he was going to prep for dinner. It was kind of nice on the inside. Compared to the inside, it looked like everything had been replaced from the inside. It was very modern looking from inside the cabin. It was really cold out. I sat around the fire the majority of the night. He cooked some hot tea and handed me some hot cocoa with marshmallows. What am I, twelve? I thought to myself. But still, I didn't complain. Eventually, dinner was ready and we all had a nice evening together. I remember asking my uncle what kind of animals are out here. He just laughed and said, What, are you scared or something? No, I remember laughing. I'm just wondering because I know it's pretty wild out here, you know? Oh yeah, it's wild out here alright. A little too wild. That's why I got old Betsy hanging up there as he pointed above the fireplace. I glanced up and saw the long barrel shotgun. When did you start hunting? My mother chuckled. I didn't. That's for protection. His reply gave me the chills, I swear to you. Protection from what? I said. From bears. Wolves. Trespassers. You name it. Shit happens out here, he said. Hey, language, my mom said. He just smiled and we just enjoyed the rest of the night together. Later that night, I was awoken by hearing weird sounds echoing out the window. It sounded far off in the distance, but something was definitely moving around his cabin. I just remembered what my uncle had said. That there's wild animals out here. It's wild. But the sounds never stopped. And for some reason, my mom slept through the whole ordeal. My bed was closest to the window, but still, it was a small room. How could she not hear this? I remember asking myself. I got out of my bed and walked over towards the window. And far off, straight in the distance amongst the trees, is when I saw it. A giant wolf. It was just standing there, breathing heavily. You could see the smoke rising from its nostrils. Its eyes were reflective of something. It looked like they were glowing. It seemed to have noticed me in the window. I don't know how in God's name it did, but it looked straight at me, I swear to you. Then all of a sudden, this wolf hopped up on its back hind legs. It took off in the woods. On its back hind legs. Like a man. I couldn't believe my eyes. I was in total shock. I just thought I saw a wolf, but this thing hopped up and ran off on its back legs. I was stunned and just glued to the glass. I couldn't look away from the window. Eventually, I fogged it up for my breath. I wiped it off and just stared. It was gone. Whatever that thing was had completely disappeared into the woods. I told my family about it. My mom thinks I was just pulling some BS. But my uncle believed me.
Well, I hope that you guys enjoyed the three true Winter Dogman encounter stories tonight. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Share me with your friends. And spread me like butter.